Hey, I'm Leah D'Amelio with Mahalo Daily. Today, we're giving a whole new meaning to lights, camera, action at USC's Institute for Creative Technologies. From buildings to objects to people to faces, University of Southern California's Institute for Creative Technologies has been on the cutting edge of computer-generated imagery. We stopped by to talk to the innovative Dr. Paul DeBevic to see what it takes to create a virtual person and seamlessly place them in any environment. Um, first, tell me a little bit about the history of the ICT lab. Well, our institute's been here for about eight years and we're basically dedicated to trying to create the next generation of virtual reality. And my group is the Graphics Laboratory. And we're trying to create new tools to make photoreal computer graphics so that people can make you know, movies, video games, educational experiences look every bit as real as you'd want them to. So what are some of the technologies you guys are developing? Well, what we're looking at here are basically anything you want to see, you know, photorealistically rendered in a virtual scene. One of the early projects I was involved in was trying to do a digital model of the UC Berkeley campus, and that's one of the first times that uh, my team and I used um, image-based modeling and rendering to take photos of like the tower in the middle of campus and then all the buildings around. Uh, and then we created basically this photoreal fly around that looked pretty darn realistic for 1997 when we were doing it. And that technology was actually used in the Matrix movie. They were trying to figure out how are we going to do the backgrounds of all of the bullet time shots. They knew that they were going to film the actors with this time slice technique uh, in a studio, but they realized they had to put a completely digital background behind them that would intercut with you know, real photography of the actual sets that you saw right before that shot and right after that shot. Well, if you use this technology to basically photograph the environment, uh, build a 3D model of it, project the photos back on, you can create a completely digital version of that set that you can match the viewpoint exactly to the camera path of the time slice rig and drop in that virtual background there. All right, so we have light stage five behind us and this was used in the Emily project. What actually happens when you enter this uh, sphere of light? We found a series of basically 15 photographs of a face and this combination of the way the face looks under all these different patterns lets us reconstruct the three-dimensional geometry of the face and then it lets us reconstruct uh, what are called surface normal maps. These are basically uh, a, a pixel for pixel map of the face where for every pixel we know pretty accurately the orientation of that tiny little piece of skin under the pixel. And our process is fast enough that you only have to hold the facial pose for about three seconds. And that means you can actually go into you know, a grimace or, or a big grin uh, or a frown, all of these you know, emotional expressions you want to see in a, in a digital actor's performance. Besides the Emily Project and the Matrix films, what are some of the other projects you guys have been involved with? Well, the first time we got to scan actors for a feature film was for the movie Spider-Man 2. For that uh, part of the process, we actually used Light Stage 2, which is sitting kind of semi-defunct downstairs right now, <laughs> uh, which had about uh, 30 strobe lights on a semicircular arm. It took about eight seconds for that to rotate around. And in that version of the process, we had to shoot about 480 images of the face, basically under every single individual lighting direction on the sphere. And that gives you like this massive data set of exactly what a person's face looks like under any lighting direction. You can make it look like they've got different colors of light coming from different directions and actually light coming from everywhere at the same time, like it usually does in most lighting environments. After Paul described the process, I wanted to jump in and see what it was like myself. Although Light Stage 3 looked intimidating, it was comprised of off-the-shelf LED lights, polarizing filters, and Nikon cameras plugged into a computer. The only thing I had to worry about was staying perfectly still for three seconds. Lights off. Ready? Mm-hmm. That's it. Still lights on? How was that? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> While the technicians at the lab processed the photographs, Paul took us over to the newest light stage, Light Stage 6, and guided us through what this 8 meter behemoth was capable of. The basic idea is that we want to be able to film somebody in there doing something and then make it look like they're doing that anywhere else in the world completely photorealistically. 
what we're gonna see here first is Bruce, who's one of our researchers in the lab, and he is walking on a treadmill in the middle of light stage six. The lights look like to the naked eye that they're just on all the time, but if we watch the high-speed video and slow it down, you can see it's actually very rapidly changing the lighting direction on Bruce over and over and over again. Right. And as a result, in the course of about a 30th of a second, we capture him in 33 different lighting conditions. And this is gonna give us all the information we need to make him look like he's lit by any lighting environment after the fact. In 1 30th of a second. Exactly, yeah. But then we can also take a lighting environment, like this is uh, the light from Grace Cathedral that has different colors of illumination, uh, kind of yellows and blues from different directions. Mm -hmm. And we can tint all of those images of Bruce before we add them all together and scale them to different intensities to replicate the light that we actually had from the cathedral. So our goal then was to take Bruce out of the light stage okay. and make it look like he's somewhere else. This is a, a, a lighting environment I shot in uh, a piazza in Pisa. Okay. And it's kind of late afternoon. It's sort of that magic hour where there's lots of warm bounce light from the, the buildings you can see and, mm -hmm. and stuff from behind the camera. And this is the result that we got. Oh my gosh. Uh, and since he's all digital, we can kind of do anything with it. So we can give him some company. <laughs> it's like Fantasia with the broomsticks. We just need music. <laughs> All right, so we're back in the graphics lab at USC's ICT, and uh, Paul, what's been done with my image since we left yesterday? Well, since we got all of those photographs of you in the light stage, uh, our team has gone run it through the processing algorithms to get your geometry and your reflectance, and we can kind of show you how we put things together here. All right, let's take a look. All right, so basically we take these images. We got a couple of you in a neutral pose, and then um, toward the end we got you with your eyes open and then actually a smile. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you did a great job and all of this stuff processed pretty well. Great. So what we can do is we can actually load this data up into a uh, real-time rendering uh, program here. Uh, here you are. This here is I a am. digital version of you. Wow. Uh, this is your neutral scan. Okay, it's just, that's digital? This is all digital here and it's 3D. We can move you around. And um, we can also, and this is important because you always have to light your actors, we can move the lighting around too. And hopefully, as this moves around, it's a relatively realistic lighting effect. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, that's it from the ICT Graphics Lab. For more information, go to mahalo.com slash ICTGL. For Leah D'Amelio, I'm the real Leah D'Amelio. We'll see you next time on Mahalo Daily.